Good morning. Tuesday morning, essential money talks time. And so today I'm going to share with you what one of my really wants is and how I got it or how I'm going to get it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And for those on Instagram, if you want to watch and see what I'm sharing, go over to Happy Spenders Beyond Budgeting or Essential Spending Planner or my Facebook page, and you will be able to see what I'm going to be showing those people on Facebook Live. Okay, let's get this. Um, okay, so I just need a, to see if everyone can see Happy Spenders Beyond Budgeting. I'll just make sure that that's working before I continue to talk. Okay, excellent. So, technology is right. So, what is my really want? Well, uh, 33 years ago, uh, I took the big leap and I traveled to Australia to meet a young man and, and eventually stayed here and married him. And we have five beautiful children. And but the sad thing is, is I was leaving my family. I have four brothers and a brother and three sisters, my parents, all my extended family, and I was leaving them to come to Australia. And so it's always been really important to me to have um, to have money to go home and return to visit my family. And so that has that's just one of my really wants. Um, I have other really wants as well, but that's the one that um, I'm going to talk about today. So where do you want to go or where, what is your really want? Um, for me, once lockdown stopped in Australia, I wanted to go home and return and see my family because it's been two and a half long years and um, now I can go back. Now, when I and this is just a picture of my family. This is the last time that we were there, which was Christmas 2019, just a month or so um, short of when COVID hit and the world changed. And so I've not been able to go back since then. I usually try and go back every year. Um, you'll see my parents. They're sitting next to us on the couch. Um, they're getting older. And so I want to be able to see them as much as I can um, as they are growing older. And so once we did this, of course, we didn't know what was coming around the corner. We didn't know COVID was going to hit. We were just grateful that it was me, my five children. And I think at that time we had four grandchildren that came. We all surprised my mom for her 80th. Um, they all had spending plans. We all had a plan um, to, to do that financially. Once we got home, Immediately, that plan continued in that savings plan that I do. Um, put away money, every, every paycheck, so that I can have money for this real want. I have other real wants, too, that I put money away for, but this is one of them that I definitely put money away for. And when you have time on your hands, like usually every year, you know, to save something and take it a year, it's usually not a lot of money. If you say, oh, I want to go overseas next month, then you're going to have a lot more money to save each week, which you may not be able to. So how did I do it? So I and some of my friends in the U.S. Um, don't even know I'm coming, but I am flying out on the 27th of June in less than two weeks and will be arriving in, uh, in Los Angeles on the 27th of June. and. I will be there for five weeks. So the first uh, three or four days, um, well, the first day I'm spending with a, an old 
uh, a neighbor and uh, my son is actually coming with me. So he's 29. Uh, my son Ben's coming with me. He gets in there a day earlier due to cheaper flights. And so he'll be staying with our friend. And then we'll be going down to San Diego for three days to see another friend and her dear parents. And, and then over to Arizona to go quickly over the border into Mexico uh, to do some things. And, and then up to Utah where I'll spend the next um, four weeks with my, my family. And so that involves car rentals. Luckily, we don't have to do accommodation, um, but traveling overseas is not cheap. Um, you have to have a plan. You have to have a long-term plan to do that. And that's what I did. And so ever since we got back from our last trip in December, 2019, I have been planning for my next trip. Now, I've had the money to go a lot sooner than now because COVID, it's just for, for two years, we couldn't travel. And so um, I have the money saved. And so I am now going to be a happy spender when I go on my trip, of course, keeping with men the money that I saved to enjoy my trip. Um, another thing too is whenever I travel, I always, just like in my personal finances at home, I always have a big bad wolf account, okay? The big bad wolf, you know that story, he's the one that came to the pig's home. So I have a big bad wolf account that protects uh, me from his visits, okay? So for example, if something breaks down, I have money for it. Um, if I get in an uh, accident with kangaroo and the kangaroo ruins my air conditioner, and doesn't have insurance, I have money to cover that. So when I travel, I always have a big bad wolf amount as well, because things, you know, you try and plan it as good as you can, but there's always some unexpected things that might happen. So you'll always have to do that. And so I always accommodate that in my, in my planning. So how did I do that? Well, one, I needed to know my money truth. I needed to know, could I even afford this? Um, and the way that I know my money truth is with my spending plan. My spending plan can show me in the future if I will have money at a certain date, at a certain time to do what I want to do. And it will help me get the money for that. And so for me, I had to know, am I going to be able to afford this? Um, and then whatever it told me, I'm going to have to be honest and listen to it and, and follow that. So again, I teach money truths. And um, whenever I travel, I do not get into debt. Um, it is not worth it to go on this beautiful holiday and then come home and owe the bank money. And it's always more than what you spent because there's interest and there's interest and there's interest. And so you can, um, it will cost you a lot more. And so I never go into debt to get to go on a trip. I always save first and then I happily spend it. Um, part of that is I do not stick my head in the sand. I know the cost, what it is. For example, when you travel to the US, you need travel insurance. Now I could just stick my head in the sand and think, oh, nothing's going to happen. That's going to save me $300. But I don't do that because I know from previous experience, when I went with my, my daughter, when she was um, 17 and she had to go to the ER, we were in there for less than two minutes and they, I had to pay 500 just to walk out the door. And then they sent me another $2,000 um, later to pay. So medical is very expensive in the US. They do not have uh, like lucky here, um, but yeah, and so you have to have those types of things. So I definitely have my eyes open when I'm going on a trip and know all the, the plan, which I've planned, and the unexpected, um, so that I am totally honest with my spending. So it's so important to have to know what you really want. Okay, that's just one of mine is to go and visit my family is a really want. Uh, because by having that goal, it will help you minimize, um, see how much, how little you can spend on your needs.
so that you have more money for your real wants, but you always have to be so careful not to just spend money on what you think you want, the here and the now. I want this. And there were times when it's like, okay, I want this, but then I think, oh, but I'm going to, I want to go to America. That's my really want. If I buy this impulse to spend, then I'm not going to have as much or I won't even be able to go to America. So we have to make sure that we are very conscious on um, the things that we, to keep our eye on the goal. Um, first, you have to know if you can even afford the trip. Okay. And the spending plan will show you whether you can afford it or not. Doesn't mean you can't afford it. It's just you might not be able to afford it when you want to go. So you might say, hey, I want to go in six months to wherever you want to go or whatever your real want is. And it might just say, okay, you can, but not, not this month. Maybe in two months time later, you can afford that because you have to still be able to take care of your needs while you're away on your holiday. You don't want to come back and have delinquent bills. So yes, first things first. Uh, me going and my really want is a style choice. I have life choice, life costs that I have to pay. I don't have a choice whether I do that. I have a choice whether I go to America. I have a choice whether I uh, buy a new car. Um, but I have to ensure that my life costs are covered first before I even think about uh, any type of style of spending. So all my life costs are covered. And so I know, and with my plan, I know that everything's gonna, everything's automated for our finances because my spending plan shows me that everything's money's gonna be there when the bill needs to come out. So just automate it. I know that. And so when I go away and I'm going away for five weeks, that everything's gonna be covered back home. And then I'll have my money there that I can spend. So life. First, and then your style. And again, I can't repeat it enough that it's not that you can't afford what you want. You just might not be able to afford it now or in a couple of months. You just might have to wait a year or you might have to wait two years. Um, but you can get what you want if you start a plan and keep to that plan. So this was my family and I uh, 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago. Um, when we went on our trip to the States, this is when I was doing budgeting, traditional budgeting. And that's so why I thought, okay, it was kind of difficult to kind of get all this, you know, um, uh, to get all the money together for that. But we did, and we didn't go into debt. But then I thought, hey, this is, there has to be a better way. And so that's when I went in search and found the spending plan and uh, stopped budgeting and started the spending plan, which has helped me over since then make my trip so much easier to plan for and to save for. And this is us again, uh, two and a half years ago when we all went to the States. So the way I do it is a spending plan is I'm looking forward. I choose a date or when I want to or where I want to go and when I want to get there. So looking at this picture, we're traveling in a car. We want to go skiing. We want to get there by nightfall. OK, and so we know when we want to go. Um, and. You know, if you go even on a local holiday, you have to plan for it and, and know how you're going to get there. And so with the spending plan, that's what I do is I plan this trip. Um, it's been planned for a long time. I just couldn't go until now. Um, and the rearview mirror is like a budget, you know. Uh, budgeting um, it has a lot to do with the past, where a spending plan has everything to do with the future. Yes, there is a reason to look backwards, but it's only for a glimpse, because I've never heard anyone say that they wish they spent more money in the past. They always want to just do better in the future. So I, to go on this trip, look forward. I planned it. I've had this plan for a long time. Um, and I know how much I needed to put away so that I had the money for my planned expenses on my trip, as well as my unexpected ones that I know will happen. So budgeting is broken. It compares uh, income and expenses. And it shows that it's possible to pay your expenses. Now, the word possible doesn't give me too much um, 
peace of mind because possible means that there's a possibility it won't happen, that you won't be able to um, pay all your expenses um, because a budget is two dimensional, but it doesn't show you how to pay your expenses. I don't want to know it's possible. I want to know how can I get on this trip? How can I afford to go and see my family? Budgets, again, just show you it's possible, which brings anxiety because, you you know, there's not that 100% clarity. Um, and the reason is, is because it lacks a vital missing dimension that um, you will find um, in a spending plan. So a spending plan does have income and expenses, but it has that third dimension of timing. Um, so the timing of all your incomes and the timing of all your expenses. And so when you um, say that you want to do something on a certain day, your spending plan will be able to tell you whether you can do that then. And it's like having a crystal ball. You, we all receive bank statements in the mail saying where you spent your money in the past. But with a spending plan, you see, literally see on the screen, and you can print it, your, your future bank statement in for the next 12 months for all your different bank accounts, which I actually teach how to have effective bank structure so that uh, you can protect your money from you because we are our worst enemy or uh, thief. So a spending plan is same forward and same proof that you can pay for the things in the future. And then it goes, of course, what a budget doesn't do, it actually shows you how. Step by step, like a GPS, how to um, achieve your goal. A spending plan is a financial blueprint of your money. So you create your financial life in the spending planner software. So you're not playing with your real money. You're actually creating a plan. Plans haven't happened yet. And then when you're happy with it, you can see that everything's fine. Then you get your actual bank accounts or your real financial to do the same thing. So there's no more experimenting and then finding out, oh, I couldn't afford that, um, which happened a lot when I had budgets. So um, a budget just says it's possible to pay your bills. For me, it would be, yeah, it's possible for you to go to the States. Yeah, you should be able to. But I would have been sitting worried and having anxiety and stress whether I could if I was using um, a traditional budget. Um, where with the spending plan, I have 100% clarity that I was able to go to the States, that I was going to have the money when I wanted to pay for the flight. Because, of course, you have to buy the flight usually a lot earlier than when you travel. Um, and that has brought financial peace to me as I'm um, preparing for my trip. And my dreams will come true because I'm so excited to go. Uh, my son who's coming with me, it's a dream of his. And so his dreams will come true. He's done the same thing. He's gone through these steps. He's planned. He's saved. And he'll be able to happily spend. Um, and I've done that through having an effective bank structure so that I have an account that is specifically for my holiday amount that I transfer money into every week. And it's non-negotiable. I do never steal from myself. Um, I don't rob Peter to pay Paul. I'm not going to rob from my bill account to take put into my holiday account because that would be stealing. That's wrong. Um, and so, we again, we have to know our money truth and also be honest. And the spending plan software, which I've mentioned, is how I've done that. And it shows you, it predicts your future and shows you how to pay your expenses. So if by chance you wanted to do something in the future or a bill and there's not enough money, it's going to show you you're not going to have enough money in six months time. But that's okay because you have six months to make adjustments. Okay, so that's where a spending plan is really powerful. A Fed budget will not show you. Plus, I know that this is a timing problem, not a money problem. And so that's what I teach people. So it shows you your perfect spending year. How would you feel if you knew that all your bills were covered for the next 12 months and you could still afford your really want 
whether it's a holiday, whether it's um, a, whatever it is that you really want, um, yet knowing that you're not going to jeopardize or sacrifice um, paying your life costs. So where do you want to go? What is your really want? Do you have a plan? Do you need a plan to make sure that it happens? Because if it's just in your head, uh, it's just a dream and a wish. You need to actually create a plan. And then, um, like I use, the software, the spending planner helps you save for it. So it does both of those really well. And then we all, of course, can happily spend that money once we've saved for it. This is my favorite saying, multiply your time and money by giving yourself emotional permission to invest time and money today for more time and money tomorrow. I did this back in early 2020 when I started, once I got back from the trip, I immediately started uh, saving for my next trip. And now it's the tomorrow. Now it's my time that I'm enjoying the benefits of all that investment of time of my putting money away into my account. So again, remember, you can get what you want. It will just depend on when you can get it. But uh, a spending plan will allow you to know when you can get it, again, without sacrificing those life costs. So what do I do as a spending planner is I help give people access to the spending plan software. I help you. I hold your hand and help you uh, achieve what you really want. Your goals become my goals. And the way I do that is I have an online course, which will step you through the, the process of creating your plan with me. They are helping you along the way. I have group courses that are just amazing support. And you, um, we work through those modules together and uh, support each other and celebrate each other's wins, as well as you receive accountability from me. So if I see that you're kind of slipping and starting to spend money on some wants, I'll remind you of what your really want is um, so that you can achieve that. Uh, if you want to read some of the people that I've helped, some of my happy spenders, as I call them, uh, you'll be able to see those on my Facebook page and see the things that they actually have achieved. And so there again, I invite you to be a happy spender. I invite you to think, what do you really, really want that will help you get your finances better organized? Um, because that's the thing that is gonna help you um, make changes. Um, the spending plan will show you your money truth and will tell you when you can or can't afford something. And that's good because then we know and then we can make a plan from there. So hopefully you will follow me. I'm, I'm, I will be posting some holiday pics as I'm in the States. It is summertime. So as, as much as I'm sad to leave cold winter Australia, which I actually love the winter, Granted, Brisbane winters. Um, I am really looking forward to being over there with my family into the warmth and the sun. Fourth of July, which is one of my favorite holidays. We're also having a big family reunion camp and just lots of fun things planned. And I can do that fully knowing that I have planned and saved for that. And it just means so much more to me for that. And so I invite you to think. What is your really want? How can you get there? And if you need a plan, you know who to come to. Um, and it's as little as $10 a month for the access to the software. And then I have very, um, very affordable and very valuable um, courses that you can take to initially create your plan and keep that going. So that's for me today. Next Tuesday will be... Um, essential Money Talks again at 11.30 and I invite you to join me then and until then, choose financial freedom. Bye.